So in this video, we're going to discuss about the natural methods of contraception. So what is contraception? Contraception is the intentional prevention of conception through use of various devices, sexual practices, chemicals, drugs or surgical procedures. So basically it is the intentional prevention of conception. Okay. So it can be classified as temporary methods and permanent methods. So in temporary methods, you can it can be used for spacing. That is, you can uh, regain your fertility after a period of time. Whereas permanent methods means you're permanently going to uh, undergo a procedure so that you won't be fertile again. Okay. So the classification, as I said before, it is temporary and permanent. So temporary methods can again be classified into natural methods, mechanical methods, chemical methods, hormonal methods, intrauterine contraceptive devices. So this is, these are the different temporary methods that are available. So in this video, we're going to discuss the first one that is natural methods of contraception. So natural methods of contraception include coitus interruptus, which is also called the withdrawal method, lactational amenorrhea, fertility awareness, which includes rhythm method, basal body temperature and cervical mucus method. So we'll quickly see what each of these mean. So the first one is coitus interruptus or the withdrawal method. So basically in this, the penis is withdrawn even before ejaculation. So the advantage is that it is very cost effective, zero cost is involved. But the disadvantage is that it is a very risky method and has a high failure rate. So basically this is, a, this is not a very good contraceptive method. Next natural method is lactational amenorrhea. Basically, lactation amenorrhea means during the time the mother lactates or uh, gives milk to the baby, she will be amenorrheic because of the decreased levels of hormones. So, it is a nature's way to prevent another pregnancy. So, here the, good, the advantage is that because of the benefit of lactation, the child is fed and there is no risk of early pregnancy. So, what is the mechanism? See, during lactation, there is increased prolactin with every field. So because of this increased prolactin, there will be low release of GnRH from the hypothalamus. Because there is low GnRH, there will be decreased LH and FSH. And thus, there will be decreased effect on the ovaries. So there will be no ovulation. Okay. So due to breastfeeding, there is increased prolactin. which So there is decreased release of GnRH, which in turn will decrease LH and FSH, which in turn will decrease ovulation. Okay. So this is the mechanism. The disadvantage is that it has a high failure rate because the timing of start of ovulation is unpredictable. We cannot say when the ovulation starts. So thus, there's a very high failure rate for lactational amenorrhea. The next method is fertility awareness. How can you be aware that you are fertile or ovulation is there? So the first method is rhythm method. So basically in rhythm method, we are going to find out or the, the woman should be able to find out when she is going to ovulate. Okay. And so during that period, they can avoid the intercourse and that is called the unsafe period. Whereas the other days, wherein they can be sure that there is no ovulation, that is called the safe days. Okay. So how is this calculated? We basically calculate according to the duration of the menstrual cycle. We know that the ovulation usually occurs in the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. Right. So from this 14th day, an ovum can be viable up to 12 to 24 hours, which means in this 14-15 range, the ovum is there. Now sperms can survive even much longer. It can around three days. Okay. So when we uh, consider that also, we can see that there are uh, the days around say 40, uh, this 17 to 12. This ADR is called the unsafe period. Now this can vary according if the periods are irregular, if the menstrual cycles are irregular, then these days can also vary. So the main problem with this method or the limitation of this method is that it can be used only by educated couples. They should know what ovulations are. They should be ready to, you know, calculate the, the safe as well as the unsafe period. Second, they have to be motivated. Okay. They should, uh, they should be motivated enough so that they can uh, practice abstinence in these unsafe days. And if there are irregular cycles, it might be very difficult to predict the ovulation. And during during breastfeeding or if it is immediately after delivery, it might be they might have irregular periods, which again can cause a lot of confusion. 
Now, if the cycles are irregular, there is a theory based on which you can calculate the safe and unsafe period. It is called the Ogino Nos theory. So, basically, it is calculated as the first day of unsafe period is calculated by the shortest cycle minus 18. So, if the, the, the lady has irregular cycles, she might have short cycles as well as long cycles, right? So, the first day of unsafe period is calculated by the shortest cycle minus 18. And the last day of unsafe period is calculated by longest cycle minus 11. Okay. So, this is how the rhythm method works. Another method to be aware of the fertility is the basal body temperature. So, in this, we they can chart the basal body temperature every day. So, that when is the time of ovulation, you can as you can see here, you can see that the body temperature suddenly increases. So, like they can like that, they can know whether they have ovulated or not. See, basically, this method can be used more for just fertility and awareness. That is, the, for, if you want to conceive, you can use this method so that you can plan uh, to conceive based on this increase in body temperature. It is not much used as a contraceptive method, but still, there is an indication whether you, you can be aware of the fertility. Okay. So, there is an increase in approximately 0.5 to 1 Fahrenheit shortly after ovulation due to increase in progesterone. So, this is how you can know whether you have ovulated or not. But as I said before, it is more useful for those who want to conceive than, to, than for contraception. Next method to know about the fertility is the cervical mucus method. So, basically in this we monitor the consistency of the cervical mucus. So, in one two days after menstruation it is dry and sticky and it becomes wet and watery near the time of ovulation. And at ovulation, it becomes very wet and stretchy. See, the logic, it is quite logical because during the, at the time of ovulation, only if the uh, cervical mucus becomes wet and stretchy, that the sperm will be able to navigate through the uh, vagina, reach the cervix and uh, to travel up through the uterus. But in the other days, it is more dry and sticky so that the sperm, sperms will, it is difficult for the sperms to enter the uterus. So, see, this is a picture which shows the uh, nature of the cervical mucus. Here, you can see that it is scanty or paste-like or it can look thick, creamy. And in these two conditions, it is infertile. Whereas, if and it is fertile, it will be more wet and watery and more stretchy. So, this is how you can be aware of the fertility. So, thus, in this video, we have quickly seen the natural methods of contraception which are coitus interruptus, which is the withdrawal method, lactation amenorrhea, fertility awareness by three methods, which are rhythm method, basal body temperature, cervical mucus method. Now, here is a, a small slide showing the different uh, university questions that have been asked from this part. First question is safe period as a contraceptive method. See, safe period means your calendar or the rhythm method. Then methods of contraception in women, we have just completed one part of it, that is the natural methods. And uh, natural methods itself can be asked as a short note. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.